That's it for the Pondio Technical Valley Weekly News. My name is Alex Sigrist, and I'll see you next week. Hello, this is Alex on Pondio Techno Valley Weekly News. Here's the news from the second week of October. OnLab launches malware handling solution for special purpose systems. OnLab introduced a malware handling solution based on manual inspection for special purpose systems or special environments where it is difficult to perform real-time inspection and engine updates. OnLab announced on October 6 that it has launched OnLab X Scanner, a malicious code diagnosis and treatment solution dedicated to special purpose systems such as production facilities, POS, point of sales, and kiosks. The company explained that OnLab X Scanner features improved usability in special environments, operational efficiency, and user convenience when linking OnLab EPS by reflecting the opinions of customers who are operating various special purpose systems. It is a non-installed solution where security personnel can perform malicious code inspection and treatment even in a closed environment, low spec equipment, or low bandwidth network environment by putting the solution in a USB. Also, by performing functions such as CPU occupancy setting, post treatment, log inquiry and storage, and quarantine, security personnel can secure system availability and security at the same time. When linking with OnLab EPS, you can download and run OnLab Scanner without releasing the lock mode, the state in which the system is protected. Isanguk Head of OnLab's marketing division said, OnLab X Scanner is a solution that has improved security and usability by reflecting customers' voices from the planning stage. We will continue to provide a safer OT security environment by identifying various customer demands for operational technology, OT, security, ref and reflecting them. For the next bit of news, we go to Bitcoin which has exceeded 69 million won, and Nexon, size and relief. Game company Nexon had lost several billion won from Bitcoin investments, and it's about to break even. Cryptocurrencies are on the recovery. According to Upbit on October 13th, Bitcoin is hovering around 69 million won as of 1 p.m. It is the first time in five months that it had reached the 69 million won level. Nexon's Japanese subsidiary invested about 100 million US dollars or 113 billion won in Bitcoin on April 28th. The average purchase price was $58,226, about 65.8 million won, and the number of purchases was about 1,717. Since then, the downtrend had continued, and at one time, the valuation went down to about 40% of its principal. However, the situation has been reversed as the heads of the U.S. financial and monetary authorities have taken a favorable stance, a more favorable stance, on cryptocurrencies. U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission SEC Chairman Gary Gensler made a statement at the U.S. House Committee on Financial Services hearing on October 5th, local time, and said that the SEC had no plans to ban cryptocurrencies. Jerome Powell, chair of the Federal Reserve of the United States, also said earlier this month that he had no intention of banning cryptocurrencies, including stablecoins. At the time of the Bitcoin investment, Nexon said, we plan to keep Bitcoin as a cash asset that can be held for the long term and as a major means of capital allocation strategy. For the third story of this week, Smilegate donates 12 million Korean won to Korea Green Foundation. Smilegate Megaport delivered a donation of 12 million won to the Korea Green Foundation for the in-game social contribution event, Save Our Seas. This event was held as Smilegate accumulated donations, then donated money when a Tails Runner user performed the quest to pick up trash scattered around the sea in the summer update theme, The Island of Emotions. From August 4th to the 30th, 1.17 million units of trash were collected, exceeding the goal of 200,000, and a total of 12 million won of donation money was raised. Donations were given to the Korea Green Foundation's Contain Earth's Waste campaign through Smilegate Hope Studio. The Contain Earth's Waste campaign raises the public's awareness about the problem of waste dumped into the sea, carries out cleanup activities, and supports related organizations. 
Smilegate, Megaport executives and staff also conducted environmental cleanup activities for the rivers around Pangyo on October 7th as a token of appreciation for exceeding the quest goal. Kim Yoo Jin, team leader of Smilegate Megaport said, I hope that the fun donation culture that contributes to society as people enjoy the game will spread more widely. Smilegate, Megaport, and Tails Runner will continue to work hard to make meaningful and enjoyable social contribution activities with users. For our last main story of this week, SK Bioscience agrees to extend contract production of global COVID-19 vaccine until the end of 2022. SK Bioscience will continue to produce COVID-19 vaccines for global pharmaceutical companies on consignment in 2022. SK Bioscience announced on October 5th that it signed an extension agreement for the facility use contract to use a part of the Andong L House stock solution production facility. It will be for the production of COVID-19 vaccines for a company supported by CEPI, Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations, at a business agreement ceremony with the international private organization, CEPI, held in Brussels, Belgium. SK Bioscience and CEPI finally reached an agreement to extend the Andong L House facility use contract until the end of 2022. It was signed in June last year and was about to expire at the end of this year. The contract states that by the end of next year, three of SK Bioscience's nine stock solution production facilities in L House will be used first for the consignment production of a COVID-19 vaccine developed by a company supported by CEPI. SK Bioscience has proven its world-class technological prowess by acquiring the European EU GMP, Excellent Pharmaceutical Manufacturing and Quality Control Standards, for the COVID-19 vaccine manufacturing facility of L House earlier this year. It is expected that additional consignment production contracts following the extension of the facility use contract will go into effect quickly and they are currently in discussion with various global companies. L House can carry out large scale commercial production of hundreds of millions of units per year. It also has the advantage of being able to simultaneously manufacture several types of vaccines through an independent stock solution production facility within the factory. And now it's time to do the quick news of the week. First up, Kakao Mobility enters collective bargaining with proxy driver union regarding platform abuse. Kakao Mobility and the Proxy Driver Union held a declaration of sincere negotiation at the National Assembly of the Republic of Korea on October 7th, saying, in the future, we will engage in collective bargaining in good faith and seek ways to improve professional services and discuss specific agendas, such as unfair labor practices and administrative litigation. The declaration ceremony was held with the meditation of Representative Jang Tolmin, of the Democratic Party of Korea, of the National Assembly, Environment and Labor Committee. With this agreement, negotiations will take place one year and two months after the proxy driving union requested negotiations in August of last year. Second story, Samsung Heavy Industries is about to win an LNG carrier order. Danish shipping company Celsius Shipping is watching Samsung Heavy Industries to place an order for making an LGN carrier. However, it is currently considering the options and has not been finalized. For the third quick news of the week, NCSoft appoints new chief financial officer. NCSoft announced on October 6 that it had hired Hong Wanjun as its chief financial officer. According to NCSoft, this appointment is to strengthen global investment capabilities and future growth engines. Vice President Hong plans to explore domestic and foreign investment opportunities and enhance corporate value. That's it for the Pangyo Techno Valley Weekly News. My name is Alex Sigrist, and I'll see you next week.